Good afternoon and welcome back to the Antique Central YouTube channel. This week's video features the results of the vintage cash cow experiment that we carried out last week. And if you want to know more about vintage cash cow, then the link to the video will be below. For those of you who don't know who Vintage Cash Cow are, well, they're a UK based company who are a bulk buyer of antiques and vintage. So if you have any antiques or vintage items that you want to sell, they will send you a free shipping label. You box it up, send off your inventory to them. They will assess it and value it and make you an offer. If you're happy with the offer, then you get a check paid into your bank account or actually have a check sent to you within a couple of days, or if you're not happy with the offer, they will return your box of antiques and vintage free of charge. So in theory, you've got nothing to lose. Right, before I reveal the results of the experiment, let's have a look at what I packaged and sent to Vintage Cash Cow uh, for them to value and make the offer. A brass tankard tourist souvenir from Cape Town. Pair of miniature brass candlesticks. Silver plated tankard, an angle poise, copper, you see from that nice deep reddish brown color, water jug. There's another pair of miniature brass candlesticks. Solid brass, antique, and it's a horse's head. A small copper water jug. Uh, galleried brass, tray mid-century it's scandinavian in fact it's denmark and it's a little candle holder middle eastern brass slipper a miniature copper kettle a miniature fire guard little miniature brass tankard an open barley twist art nouveau brush pot or a vase for dried flowers. Copper tankard, a little arts and crafts period dish. A copper and brass water pitcher, more water jug. Finally, we have the remains of a, what I think is a Victorian or possibly Georgian toast rack. The stock I sent them was an accumulation of job lot purchases from auctions over the last 12 months or so. So to be quite honest, it didn't really owe me anything. And I thought rather than uh, nickel and dime them over two or three years at antique markets, fairs and flea markets, etc., I thought I would take this opportunity to see how much our vintage cash cow would offer, offer me for these approximately 30 items. Now, for those sharp-eyed viewers amongst you who watched last week's video, you'll notice I held back from sending a few items to Vintage Cash Cow. And it was for a couple of reasons. Firstly, I've actually added the copper candlestick to my e-commerce website, the antiquecentral.co.uk website. I also wanted to check on whether or not a couple of the items were in fact silver. And the first one, which I've now done, is or was the, or is the, um, the <coughs> chamber stick. Now, um, because of the workshop renovation going on at the moment, uh, all of my silver testing kit is buried in my storage unit. So I took this to a local jewellers and he checked it over and he confirmed that this actually is silver plate and not silver. So this will be going off in the next box to Vintage Cash Cow. This little item, however, this little uh, silver clamshell dish, turns out it is silver, not silver plate. So I will be adding this again to the e-commerce site, website, that is antiquecentral.co.uk. So that was a bit of a turn up for the books and just shows to all of you out there, if you're fairly new to this game, then always double check before you sell anything as to whether it's silver or silver plate. 
Right, I also, uh, to boost the numbers back up, I also added a few other items and I'll show you some still images of the additional items I included in my box. A vine wood corkscrew, a cold painted dish, a German pewter beaker, three steel door pushers, an engraved brass bowl, a Chinese book slide, and finally two lacquered chinoiserie boxes. So there you go, a total of 32 antique and vintage items all boxed up and sent to Vintage Cash Cow. Now what I should have done in the last film, and pretty typical of me, I completely forgot, was to ask you to guess how much you think I will have been offered for these 32 items. Now bear in mind, they're all the fallout from job lots that I've acquired over the last 12 months and they don't owe me anything, so my expectations weren't high at all. But anyway, what we'll do now, I'll give you 10 seconds to pause the video and drop a comment in uh, guessing how much you think Vintage Cash Cow offered me. Right, there you go. Hopefully you enjoyed the 10 second interlude while you left your comments guessing how much Vintage Cash Cow will be offering me. Now, what I did manage to do, amazingly for me, is write down what I thought Vintage Cash Cow would offer me. Now, I had a, a low, a medium and a high, so to be quite honest, I went with my sort of median guess, best guess. And I wrote this down the day I sent the box off and I haven't opened it since you have my word for it. So I will reveal what, now what should I do? What would you want me to do? Do you want me to reveal my guess, my best guess first or let you know what Vintage Cash Cow actually offered? Well, I'll reveal my guess first. This is my own guess. So I stapled it. There it is. Right. <clears throat> there we go. I feel like I'm opening the uh, winning Oscar nomination now. So my best guess, which I made on the 20th of July, 23, was, there we go, £30. So for 32 items, vintage and antiques, albeit fallout from auction boxes, so worth very little individually, I guessed that Vintage Cash Cow would be offering me £30. <clears throat> now, what did they offer? Well, I had a phone call about, I would say, five working days after sending the box in. So you've got to allow for the uh, shipping time and also for the experts to view, assess, and then give their best estimate on the uh, value of the items. So I thought five days was really good, excellent turnaround. I was also called personally by one of the customer support uh, team at Vintage Cash Cow, uh, a young chap, and he was incredibly helpful, honest, talked me through the process, and uh, finally, uh, after a little bit of suspense, told me what they were going to offer. And, drum roll, Vintage Cash Cow offered me £45. <clears throat> Yep, £45, so it exceeded my median expectation. The uh, high expectation was 40 the low was 20 and that's why I went for 30 which is the mid-range. So I got £45, which was higher than even my highest expectation. And I appreciate I'm waffling now with all the excitement. So I was really pleased with that because as a dealer, 
I was aware what all those individual items were worth and obviously I knew what I'd paid for them. And individually, there wasn't anything in there that was a standout item that was going to you know, uh, raise a huge amount of interest, to be honest. So it really was the job lot and what would I get for the job lot? 32 items and the offer was £45, which I thought was very fair for the content of the box. <clears throat> Excuse me. And as a result of that, I will be using Vintage Cash Cow again. And in fact, I've got my... Uh, well, I'm waiting for the shipping labels to arrive, but I've got my second box packed and ready to go. So all in all, I found it a really pleasant, rewarding experience. And I have to say now, absolutely confirm, I have no affiliation whatsoever with this company. I'm not getting anything out of it at all. This is just my personal experience and relaying that to you guys, viewers, and the Antique Central community. So, let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd really look forward to hearing your thoughts on the offer and the also the contents, I guess, of what I sent in, the contents of the box. Did I get value for money? Obviously, they have to make their profit. They're dealers themselves, so they're not going to pay full retail. More, You've got to absolutely be aware of that, and that kind of contributes to why I'm happy with what I got. I certainly covered the cost of my outlay on the items at least. I think another really important factor that you need to take into account as well is that if I were to sell these items at, for example, a flea market, then I'm going to be paying a table fee um, for the privilege of doing that. And around by me, obviously it will vary from country to country or region to region, but around by me, a sort of an average kind of table fee is, you could say, probably top end around £45 for a couple of six-foot tables. So in order to have made the £45, not profit as such, but return on selling these items, I would have had to have sold them for a total of £90, and that would include the £45 return plus the £45 table fee. Uh, equally, on eBay, you will be charged fees as well. And towards the end of my eBay career, if you want to call it that, my uh, eBay fees were up to as high in any one given month as uh, 45%. That's incredible, isn't it? So I'm not even going to do the maths on, on that. It's just too depressing. So the point I'm making anyway is the money I got from Vintage Cash Cow is effectively, uh, there's no fees applied to that at all. I know it's uh, a reduced price compared to retail and they have to make their profit, but it's just money in the bank basically. And the equivalent on a, a flea market uh, would be approximately £90. I'd have had to have achieved £90 to get £45 in the bank. And I'm not sure I would have done that, to be quite honest with you. So as I said, I will be using them again. The next box is packed and ready to go, just waiting for the shipping labels. Uh, not a huge amount to add beyond that now. You know as much as I do. So if you've enjoyed this video, and hopefully you're still watching, to support our channel and grow the community, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And most important of all, as ever, take care. Stay safe and I'll see you next time.